Okay, moving on with the percussions. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of them, so let's see what we can do with what we have. Okay, maybe this is going to be a snare. To move it into a simpler, into a new audio channel. Sorry, that was a mistake, but okay, never mind. It is a bit to the right, the sound, but we can fix that with a utility. I'm just going to set the width to zero. I'm actually liking the, the sound as a snare drum so i'm going to leave it give it a little bit of distortion so it's so it get, gets more crack out of the sound maybe a bit of reverb not this one <coughs> Maybe let's see the preset. Let's take the glue compressor. I will try to match the volumes when the compressor is off and on so I'm not getting fooled by increasing volume but like I said I actually really don't care about the, about the sound quality or am I making mistakes this is just having fun I don't like it. Goodness. Maybe I'll do it by hand. <clears throat> I think I'll do the same thing I did with the toms. So I'm just going to push it into a limiter. So freeze it, flatten it, and <clears throat> like I said, now I know that I have the snare hitting zero, and I can turn it down and turn up the transient a bit. I don't know if I'm going to keep this uh, last bit I'll see how it goes but for now let's loop it 
and hear how it sounds. And now we have a snare drum. Uh, I'm going to drop it into a new MIDI channel. I'm just going to delete this one. Rename. But now I th think I don't want it hitting every single, uh, I, I want to hit it on the fourth, but I'm going to change the starting point so it's hitting each time differently a bit. So I'm just going to turn off the grid. too much.
think that's good enough. I think that's enough for the snare. Maybe we'll, we will get into some affecting more extensively later, but I think that's good enough for now. Let's see what we have next. Oh, I think maybe I'll use this instead of a crash. I think it's a cool sound for a crash. Yeah, let's move it into a new channel. Maybe add some more top end. Yeah. I'll mono it. So with two zero. And I will probably add a bigger reverb to get on uh to get a longer tail to get that cymbal sound and again I'm going to do the same thing I did with the crash uh, the snare and the tom I'm going to push it into the limiter not too much but okay it saved everything so okay I'm going to uh, lengthen the the individual sample so I can freeze it and get the tail to freeze and flatten into the uh, into the one shot so now we have the tail <coughs> let's go to the arrangement view maybe loop this part Okay, now if I want the tail to be even louder, I can command E here and bump up the volume. But I'm going to fade out a bit. I can get it even louder if I, for instance, go here and raise this. And now I'll do this. and raise it up again fade it out and now I'm just going to come and join it Maybe some uh, side chaining here. 
<coughs> this is a 16th. Okay, clip envelope. The, okay, but I'm not going to sidechain the first one, uh, the first hit, the initial hit. I'm going to sidechain everything later. So, okay. Let's say it like this. No, I need to make a fade here as well. And a fade here as well. And I'm just going to command join so that the fade ins and the side chaining gets uh, baked into the sample. So now we have it here directly in the sample. So this is going to be the crash. I usually keep the crash out of the hi-hats folder because I like to see it where it's currently located, where everything is. It's kind of a nice marker for my individual uh, parts of the song. I'm going to make it 16 bars long or 32, 32, let's say 32. Okay. I think I'm going to put a limiter on it. It's going over. Yeah, it's going. I'm just going to put it down here to zero and it's going to stay at zero. Okay, that's the crash. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, this is a cool sound. Like I said, I think I'm going to use it as a reverse clap. Okay. And I think I'm going to have it maybe reverse into a clap really uh, not so often because it can get a bit boring and it's a really overused effect but sometimes once in a while it's cool just going to use the right side of the channel So let's say four bars, I'm going to have it on the last snare in the fourth bar. So I'm just going to command join. 
no sorry made an error here uh, said right that's it right and, uh, yeah something I did something wrong <coughs> oh yeah I know what I did wrong freeze and then flatten As you can see, I love freezing and flattening. I don't like to keep uh, stuff in in a form where I can change a lot of things. I like to get a sound sounding good, and then I bounce it down to wave, and this saves me a lot of time later because you get lost in tweaking and tweaking and this way this is just working fast and that's the way I like to work I, I really like this one probably cut out too much of the tail from this sound now but like I said before I don't care it's all messing around this really sounds like a rim shot so I'm not going to use it as a snare
mode adds a bit of grain to the sound. I think I will add a, another channel of this with a with something a bit different. I'm just going to record this through a really, really wet reverb and then side chain it and then blend it with the original sound. This will give me a lot of let's say noise and like I said that's something I'm looking for in this track I don't need to record a lot of it I just need a short loop I can sidechain so let's say these two bars and I'm just going to delete this one this reverb and let's hear how it sounds and now I'm just going to heavily sidechain this this uh, reverb and I do mean heavily <clears throat> I'm just going to make a blend and then a uh, blend of them and just export to wave like I said uh, so I can't mess around with it later and spend five days trying to figure the levels out if I make a mistake it's a mistake it's okay don't worry about it so much Maybe I'm just going to use one channel here, for, for instance, left. And then I'm going to spread the reverb.
reverb is cool, but I think it's a, still a bit too loud. That's better, I think. It's just the background effect of filler, let's say. Just going to put a limiter on it so it's not going over zero. And I'm just going to record a few bars of it and that's it for this sound. I need to pull it down a bit so, so it's not recording uh, while clipping. So even though we used limiters heavily on this sound, you see a lot of dynamics in it. I mean, this is a huge difference between the reverb and the <coughs> and the original sound. So I'm just going to loop a part of it and crop it. And now we have a cool little loop. Just going to turn it down. I just can't properly judge the volumes now on headphones, so I'm not even going to worry about it. We did this one, so let's move on to the next one. Oh, I like this one. And let's hear the final one. Oh, I like this one as well. It's, sounds like a clap as well. But first for this one. I think I'm going to use this one also something in the form of a crash, but kind of a dubby delay one. almost like an effect so I'm just going to use the left channel where also I'm just going to delete some of the low end there's not too much of it, just a little bit, but hey, we can't be too safe. And now for the, 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 for the delay.
So now I have a crash on bar number one and I'm going to have this hit on bar 16 uh, or 17. Uh, So 32 and hitting on 17. I think I'm going to group those two and just call them crash. One needs to be a little bit lower. Let's see how it sounds without waiting for it. Lower and thinking more stereo. Yeah, much better. Much better. Save it. And now for the last percussion. I don't think I'm even going to bother with this one. I'm just going to delete it.
Yeah, this snare drum in the end actually came out came out as a tambourine. Oh well. If that's how it goes, that's how it goes. Maybe some reverb on it. That's it for the percussion part of the video. I think I have the, all the main elements I'm going to need. Now I'm just going to go record some synths and I think that's going to be it for the recording part and then we're going to go to the arrangement.